All right, guys, so we're back again at the old Dynaho. Uh, this time I have a full set of the cheapest, uh, very large crow's foot wrenches that I could find. I went with crow's foot over the traditional wrenches because in a machine like this, uh, you never know where you're gonna have to fit into. This will fit in almost every situation. You use them on a regular socket wrench like this. Um, it lets you get in a lot of tight places. There, it's gonna be more frustrating to use these than a regular crescent wrench, but if, if the crescent wrench won't fit, then this is what you're gonna use. One thing I'm gonna do though before I start is, I've plugged up here, I put a cap on. This is the uh, dump valve line for the whole, for everything on the system. So this is the disconnected one off that pump. The other end is, won't come off. And then right there, is the um, output. So I want to start it up like this and just see if a ton's coming out the output, then it should be probably okay. And if a ton's coming out there, then we know that it's all bypassing. And um, I'm positive that it's it's just the bypass valve. And I'm gonna find that there's a, there's like, a, I don't know, a one ounce gold nugget is what's jo you know blocking it open. I, I feel strongly that that's what it's gonna be and not that everything's completely ruined. But anyway, so we're gonna get that out. We're gonna try to put the new coolant line on so we could run it for longer than just a minute. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, I gotta get somewhere where I can actually push the throttle. We're gonna start it up again and see if it comes out, if anything comes out the relief much. And then I'm gonna try to work these controls if, if, if I get a good feeling. So, all right, fire in the hole. Huh. Well, that's an interesting thing. Well, let me move the valve all the way forward. We're gonna start it up one more time. So the valves are in position to move. Oh geez, that was more than I wanted to come out of there. Okay. Well, remember when I said it could just be a stuck relief valve? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a lot of flow for not making pressure. I think we're making pressure. I think we got a stuck relief valve, which is a relief. Ha ha. Okay guys, so I'm looking at this and I'm actually thinking, um, for what you can see of it, this section on the back is the pressure relief part and that part is the pump. There's three bolts holding on the pressure relief part to the pump. I think I'm gonna try to take the pressure relief part off. This this came off nicely, um, but the hose is so stiff. It's unthreaded there. You can see the threads, but the hose is so stiff. Uh, I can't get it off. So I'm not gonna try. I'm just gonna undo, the undo those other three. This line that looks like it's connected is disconnected over here. So it should come out easily. So I'm just gonna pull off the pressure relief block, hopefully. Because at the moment, that seems like the easiest option. It won't later, but right now it does. So I'm gonna get some uh, tools, see what I can do. Okay, well, let's get this bad boy off. I actually think that'll come right off. So that's what happened to me underneath the tractor. That should swivel and that should stay attached, but the wrong thing happened. So that's just a just a, oh, what it is is a BSPP, uh, British Straight Pipe, to uh, JIC adapter. Uh, British Straight Pipe is pretty much the same thing as NPT, except without a taper. Um, there's some other differences, but I can see there's wrench marks on this valve. I'm thinking that means I ain't the first person to, to delve. That's the valve right there. Yeah. I think it was just stuck. I'm gonna undo this. Uh, I'm gonna undo this part just to see what's in here. But I think this is just a passageway that was drilled and a passageway that was drilled. I'm just gonna make sure there's nothing in there. What I think is, I think this just got uh, stuck in place and a little bit of uh, polishing will free it up and that's it. i surprised there's a groove here, but no O-ring in it. But maybe someone before me decided it didn't need no stinking O-ring and that disinclined to argue. So maybe just a little piece of trash got caught in it. Where's my gold nugget? Now, 
Still not there. Oh well. Oh, this is the pressure relief boy. And now it all makes sense. I'm glad I took that apart. If you can see, this is the mating surface. And, oh, it's just chowdered right up. Well, that'll do it 10 times out of 10. There's a, I don't know if you guys can see or if I'm pointing it, there's a groove right there in it. So that'll be why it's not sealing. And that'll be why we're not making pressure. Let's see what the inside of the valve looks like. Yeah, it looks like a hole. I don't know what I thought I would see. It's definitely steel. I can definitely make one of these. Yeah, Brad, I'm not seeing it. Well, then that's, that's probably where we're gonna stop for tonight. I probably need to, you know, possibly uh, see if I can get some government work done at work and get a new one of these made and clean this off properly so that we don't fight ourselves. Get a new O-ring of this size as well because this one's all chowdered up. So yeah, somebody probably dove into here, found that it was dinged, kind of polished it up, stuffed it back in. It probably kind of sort of worked for a little while and, and then it didn't. That's a, actually the best possible answer because I was thinking this was a $300 problem and now I'm thinking it's a, uh, a $300 problem because you know I got the hookup so man it might be might be time to see it move that would be cool the other thing what what might have happened to cause this is if somebody dropped this in and put this on first it could have been pushing like this and cocked the whole time which would explain why it looks like that instead of pushing it straight in so um for all those dozens of Dynaho owners out there, just something to be cautious of. So while I was dicking around with that valve, um, my buddy Gabe there, he replaced this hose. It might be a little on the long side, but that's fine. Um, and, and what we did, because we're, we're hacks and that's fine, Cut it off, left the JIC end just like a hose bar, and just hooked it in. Um, yeah, we'll probably need to cut. Well, eh, I think I think there's a good. Re it, it's nice and free this way. It'll be fine. There might be an air bubble in here for all eternity, but that's kind of the least of my concerns. But at least now it's on there. It's nice. This is a coolant hose. We aren't going to have another leak, except for th this one's going to leak next, and then and then that's going to leak and everything's gonna leak but we'll be back tomorrow hopefully with a repaired pressure relief valve which is the stupidest reason i mean that one little piece this big brings this whole machine to its knees Okay, so we're here with the valve and uh, we're gonna get ready to put it in the machine today, but we're gonna just talk a little bit about uh, what I did to fix it and um, how it works. It's kind of a funky design. So what I did to fix it is, is I took this little guy here and there was a big divot, like maybe 20 thousandths of an inch deep. And I, uh, because I view discretion as the better part of valor, I asked our very talented welder at work to just put a little bit of braze in it. And then I just, uh, you know, the material of the, the needle is quite hard, so I was able to just carefully sand it down and polish it down. And then there's a little gray ring on it that you'll see. And that gray ring is because afterwards I took just a little bit of clover compound, uh, fine, fine solution, which is a lot like, um, it's like what you use for valve grinding compound, except it's oil-based instead of water-based. But uh, it's good stuff that's in every machine shop in the world. So I used that to polish this to the seat just so if there was a little ridge on that device, it wouldn't, it would still seal pretty well. So the other piece is this is, a, I'd call this the shuttle. This moves back and forth to control the flow of oil. So you might be saying, well, if this is the pressure, what, what does this do? So let's look right down on top of this. That is the exploded view of this. So this is the uh, intake, this is the pressure side, and this is the relief side. So you can look though, and this is the passage that that needle goes in, and there's a hole that you can see, yep, right there, that goes from this area of the needle back into the intake. If it was just that, 
then this would feed the oil back to the to the intake only. And um, because it's going past a valve like that, it would shear is the term for it. And what that means is that it would be heating up more and more and more as the oil cir circles around. And so in an application where it might occasionally go beyond the pressure that it's regulating at, that would be fine. Like if a filter was plugged, that would be okay. But an application where it's going to spend most of its time bypassing, that's not okay. And that's what the shuttle is for. And what that does is, if you look on this side, you've got, this is where the shuttle valve goes in. Goes in like this. This is the output from the pump. This is the um, dump port to, the, to return to the tank. And this is the pressure line. And if you look at this, and this goes in here like this, and the bore is tight on all of these surfaces. Uh, and if you look at this, you go, well, how does oil go in here and come out there? And that's where these two holes in the end of it come in. So the oil goes in through here, through these holes, out the middle where the spring is, and to this. And what that does, that also does, that puts pressure on it to stay in this direction. There's also the spring to stay in this direction. But if it goes over, and I think it's about 350 PSI, but I could be wrong, if it goes over that, it will bypass a little bit of oil through here. And once a little bit of oil starts bypassing through there, there's a little tiny hole that you guys can just see, and the oil, will, the oil coming up through that hole and pushing on the end of the plunger is going to force that to shuttle over. And as it shuttles over, it opens up the port to there, dump it to it. Now, it seems a little convoluted, but the point of that is, is that when this opens, there's very little shear on the oil, and so it's not going to put a lot of heat in the oil to use this valve. And what it'll probably do is kind of float around pretty actively, I would think, to, to, to throttle it. So it can just be a little open or it can be a lot open. Um, but most of the time, it's just going to kind of float around wherever it needs to be to maintain a system pressure of, uh, I think, 350 PSI. I've cleaned up the, val the valve and seat for that part. For this part, I put it in my lathe and just hit it with some Scotch-Brite because uh, there were some vertical lines on this surface. And I'm talking like I could still see the deepest ones, but just like 10, 15 seconds a spot, not too much pressure. You're not trying to remove material because this needs a tight fit in that bore to work well, but you're trying to remove any high points. And on the same note, I took... Uh, a pencil and split it and put a little piece of scotch brite in that and use that to clean up that bore and there's probably a little bit of junk in there which is why that shuttle valve didn't fit in so now i got to flush it all out because i've contaminated this with uh, particulate matter that you don't want in your hydraulic system and that will fix the problem i have new o-rings for back here uh never reuse these kind of o-rings they're they're trash after once they'll they'll leak and leak and leak the other thing I have to realize, though, is because this and this is where it's bolted together, I need to be very aware of how I tighten it down because I don't think these sit against anything. So it'll be very easy to tighten it down at a funny angle, and then you're going to lose a lot of fluid. And I also want to use the, the float by being able to kind of move this around on those four bolts. See, if you notice the... Um, the, the witness mark of the O-ring gets very thin here, and the O-ring actually had a mark on it, so it's barely, barely sealing. So if I can put the whole thing in and just lift it up as high as I can, you know, this has plenty of room to move around in, in that hole, and that might bring this in just a little bit more. So um, I suspect somebody else has been in here from the tool marks on this, which are not mine this time. Uh, not that I'm perfect, but I didn't put a pipe wrench on this fitting. Not as many tool marks on this, so it, it kind of seems like someone may not have figured out that this was the problem and was trying to make this uh, a better solution. So anyways, uh, that's how you fix a 16 ton uh, loader for uh, free 99, where, you know, it's crazy. 16 tons, and this part, which weighs, I don't know, three grams, can bring it all crashing down. All right, after about one of those uh, three hours later uh, SpongeBob montages, I got this bad boy in here. So, all right, I'm gonna put you guys on the hood right about there so you can look forward. And I'm gonna use my, oh, there we go. 
I'm gonna use my uh, vice grip uh, throttle control to set the throttle somewhere that seems reasonable to me, get it started up, climb back in the cab, push the controls, and then celebrate or cry, whatever. I just, I live here now. This is my home. I live on the machine, I work on the machine. It doesn't do anything per se, but this is my life. Oh, a little more throw. A little more. I know two things for sure. One, GoPros are tough. Two, I'm an idiot. And that didn't work. But I think I'm gonna open up the line and hopefully let it uh, uh, prime itself. Maybe it just can't move anything. I don't know, uh, cause it's just full of air right now. <sighs> All right, I did a quick test where I disconnected the, uh, the blow off of that pump again. Nothing came out. The pump needs to be primed. So the only way I can figure to do that is disconnect the inlet pipe here. Um, bend, hopefully bend it up. This is not very flexible. I mean, even when it's new, it's not very flexible. And I'm just gonna fill up this luck, lucky quart of Marlo Mystery Oil from the, uh, from the water bin. I think we'll just call that the water bin right now. Um, and just pour it in and hook it back up and close it off as best I can and, I know that when I disconnected this the other day, much of this line disconnected and that was empty too and it reprimed. So I think I just need enough to get past this point right there, so. Okay, so if you look down there and you see a bunch of oil flow out like we saw the other day, then that's a good sign. And uh, that's what I'm going for at the moment, hopefully. <laughs> I would say that seems suspiciously primed. Oh yeah, I wanna come. <laughs> I almost forgot to close this, this line off uh, before starting it, which would have been awesome. Just amazing. Really enjoyable. These are way easier to use if you're not trying to like film yourself use them, for sure. I really like these pliers for up to a certain size of fitting. They, they just don't seem to, because they grip so well, they don't seem to rip up. I mean, they're Nipex, so they're, you know, a million dollars. I think they were actually 25 bucks, something like that. But all right, I can't film down there while I'm working on that fitting. So I'm gonna fill, do that and then I'll bring you guys back with it starting up. I'll probably put you guys on the roof this time. So uh, you'll fall further, I guess. I'm just gonna take you guys along with me. I, I'm aggressive. All right, so you got your uh, precision start cable. Perfect. Well, I got the pump to prime. Yeah. Oh, that just leaves that nice streak-free shine. Beautiful, wow. I probably could have made more of a mess, but wow. All right. Oh crap, where the hell's my wrench? I'm losing my mind. But I think now I've got pressure at the controls. I've got the lines bled. I got a hook, oh, there we go. We were getting some out of the, uh, the end of the line, so that's good. 
Um, what a pain. All right. So now I think if I connect this up, one thing with these JIC fittings, you do not have to murder them tight. Uh, like just a, just a, a light grab is, is almost enough. That's about it. Just a good tightness. Okay. Look around the other side and compose myself and hopefully we'll move some controls today and uh, not spray any more hydraulic oil everywhere, but probably. Oh yeah, it's going everywhere. Okay, now for the moment of questionable truth. She lives. I'm thrilled. But there's not very much coolant in the engine. I have more coolant, but I just was like, I need to see this move before I just, I needed it. Ah. This is, this is the look of a satisfied man right here. I tell you what. I don't know if you guys can see it right there, but there is a huge pileated woodpecker. Look at that guy. I'm gonna keep getting closer till he runs away. Wow, that is a pretty, pretty bird. That's huge, too. I don't know if you know, they're about a foot tall, so. And there it goes. This nature moment was brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. No, no. What I'm trying to do here is uh, there's some whoops and wallers here. I'm just going to try to back drag it first to level those out. Once I get that a little bit better, I'm going to come over to this lump right there. And uh, I'm going to get that stump out. This should be a good test of it. That's a big stump. It's, it's definitely, you know, a little rotted, but not... Uh, not that far. I might even just try to doze right through it. Um, the whole goal is to just make a, a really nice flat spot here. Um, we're trying to make the whole area flattened right out. So I'll probably have to come back to about here, scrape a little bit, take that off, push that pile there out. So that's just kind of what I'm attempting to do. Um, you can be the judge of how successful I am. Probably not very successful, but... This is, uh, this is not a fine work finishing machine by any stretch of the imagination. 